So just to reiterate, I find that astonishing. Yes. They're actually making yeah. dental dental appliances, appliances look crowns, like bridges. they've got fluorosis. Let's put a fluoride spot. Yeah, let's put a fluoride spot on there so it looks natural, so you don't think it's a fake tooth. And that's how how society is, is viewing it. And you know, children that are at school with my children have severe enough dental fluorosis that a 14-year-old child can diagnose it. They can see it and they can recognise it. They've seen it enough. So, yeah. broadening out from that... Why should they have more fluoride? They've already had toxic doses. Who says they need it? Who says it's not already in their bodies? And why aren't they being tested for fluoride in their bodies? And that can be done. You know, but that, And that's what we've been asking for in this community. Test our community first. We may already have fluoride. You're telling us we need it. How about find out if we already have it? And we're definitely being exposed to it on a daily basis. Mm. From everything we eat that we bring in from Sydney, we bring our fruit and veggies up from Sydney. Uh, they might be organic, but they're still being watered with fluoridated water and chlorinated water. We, we have everything, you know, the juice you buy in the supermarket, everything. The kids are being exposed to it all the time. Mm. So just yeah. to reiterate, Fluorosis is not a genetic condition, it's actually a damage, isn't it? Of course it is. <laughs> How can it be genetic? Can it, it's, I can it be passed on from, from parent to only child? Only if the mother is taking fluoride tablets and then that's more, I, I guess you could call that a congenital rather than hereditary, but it, that's environmental and a lot of the problems we're seeing in, in health, in general health in our population are related to environmental toxins and poisons and pollution and fluoride is just one of those. It's one we know about, we know they're doing it and we can control it to a certain degree. We can control it by not adding it to the water but yes it's in the air, it's, it's an industrial pollutant already so we're already, we're lucky we're coastal, we're not breathing in so much. Uh, if, you, if you live you know, inland and, and you're getting sprayed with, with pesticides and uh, or you're near, say, an Alcoa factory or a brickworks or any any industry that's producing fluoride, then it's in your air, it's on your it's on your veggie garden. You, you're fully exposed to it. Why on earth do we need it in the water? Yeah. Are there professional risks to Australian dentists who oppose water fluoridation? In a way, if you if you are concerned about what other dentists think of you, if if their professional opinion of you as a practicing dentist affects you, in my practice, no, didn't didn't worry me. But I can see how other dentists want to be accepted by their peers. They don't want to stand out as being different. Uh, you know, dentists are renowned for keeping things pretty close to the chest. How they practice, what they do, how they run their businesses. They don't want to. They don't want to stand out. You Would know? you encourage dentists to yeah. start making a stand oh, on this definitely, issue? Definitely, definitely. I'd love, I'd love them to just, just look into it. But first, also remember, if here's, here's a product and here's a, a type of treatment that was developed over 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago. What are you doing in dentistry that you were doing 50 years ago? You know, you, you may not have been born, or you may not have, have been in practice. But would you still be? Practicing dentistry using materials, using uh, you know a treatment regimen that's over 50 years old—that's dinosaur stuff. You know, I'm, as dentists, most dentists pride themselves on being a bit cutting edge and being you know advanced and having the latest equipment and having the latest gadgets. And here you have this antique kind of product that it, it's a poison. It shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be. It has no place in your room. So you don't even use oil of clothes. Eugenol anymore, you know, which is a, a tried and tested old um, remedy for toothache. You've got, oh no, that's too old fashioned. We, we won't use that, but we'll use fluoride. Let's keep using fluoride. So, what would you, how would so you please, approach yeah. dental decay? What is, what is the lesson you could teach to children and yeah. parents of children that are teaching them good dental habits? What it's would all, you teach them? Well, it's all based on nutrition and good nutrition. I understand there are, par there are parents out there or the children out there that breathe through their mouths and they dry out their mouths and it makes it harder. Again, here's an environmental problem, you know, asthma and, and nose and mouth breathing. That makes it harder to control dental decay, but you only have to take sugar out of the diet. You know, yes, you can uh, use fissure sealants to protect deep pits and, and fissures in teeth and we know that 
even those who believe that fluoride works topically understand that it doesn't work in those pits and fissures and grooves in the teeth, so you have to seal them anyway. Um, good, good dental hygiene techniques, but nutrition is number one. You definitely get rid of the sugar, get rid of all the sugar components of uh, the white flour, the you know, high sugar carbs, and it would be an issue. Mm. And we're not educating our children, and we're lazy. I know many dentists who ch whose children are junk food addicts, and they think, that's okay, I'll give them a fluoride treatment later. You know, they'll be so fine. would it be reasonable to assume that most dentists would not dare speak against fluoridation orthodoxy for fear of ridicule or worse? Yeah, I think, I think ridicule, not being taken seriously, that's the big one. You know, I don't, I don't know about, I know, I know that there was a letter written um, by the ADA president to local dentists here and telling them not even to speak to me about the topic of, of fluoride in the area. Because, but this is bizarre. I, because I, they might actually I find learn that, something and believe me or that's take correct. me seriously. I find Otherwise, this... if I was not to be taken seriously, they would say, oh, let her go, she's nuts or whatever, you know. But How can you be taken them, seriously? Not even to discuss it with me. That's yeah. right. How can you be yeah. taken seriously putting a known toxin in the water, especially yeah. when Europe has banned it, and there is a weight of scientific evidence makes, now? What makes our dentists think they know more? That they know more than the European dentists, or they, you know, what makes them think they've got that advanced knowledge? And even in the US, where you know they were the ones pushing, pushing this this whole issue initially, and they, they're turning around and going, "Oh, my stuff up." I think the biggest problem is if you admit that you were wrong, then you have to, you know, make amends in some way, whether it's financial or whether it's, um, you know, community service or something. I don't know. I admitted that I was wrong. I didn't get run out of town or get lawsuits or anything else. I applied topical fluoride. I recommended people take fluoride tablets. I, you know, supported water fluoridation early on. And then I just went, no, that's not right. You can be big enough to just admit that, that this has been a major, major mistake. And get in early before <laughs> before you're forced to, you know? Get in before everybody else does, I say, yeah. So a very simple, straight question. Is fluoride safe for infants and young children? No, definitely not. As a mother, would you want your own kids drinking industrial waste? <laughs> Oh, no way. No way. And does it make you angry that the government is lying to all parents? Angry initially, and, and now it's just, you know, if you're going to believe what the government has to say on any health issue, then, you know, you're really putting yourself in a pretty bad situation. So, yes, parents are being lied to, and yes, they, for some reason, want to believe everything the government says, even though you ask the average person in the street, do you believe politicians tell the truth? No, no, they lie, they, they make things up, you know. Yet we believe as a whole that government cares about our health. Uh, they don't. Our, our hospitals are overflowing, they don't care about our health. All they want to do is make bigger hospitals to put more people in there. So. Do you filter your own water? Yeah, definitely. And uh, what, there's already what do enough, you use? Well, there's already enough water treatment chemicals in the water that when we shouldn't be consuming. Chlorine's the obvious one. Easy to get out, chlorine. So we use a whole of house filter and we remove uh, chlorine, heavy metals, um, any uh, chlorine byproducts, and you know most of the water uh, disinfecting chemicals that are being used. We get pesticide in the water here. There's uh, a lot of farming goes on and uh, pesticides get washed in after storms. We need to remove those as well. Clean water is so important. Without clean water, forget about it. You might as well be smoking, partying, you know, just eating rubbish all the time because it's water. We're 70, water is 70% of our body, 80% of our brain. If we don't get the water clean and the water right, we can't grow and develop and, and stay healthy. So to me, water is everything. So, but when, if, if, if we have to have fluoride in our water here, uh, we will be in addition to having our whole of house filter, we'll be putting in a reverse osmosis system for our drinking water. The options really are distillation or reverse osmosis for getting fluoride out. Very hard to get all of the fluoride out. And it's, and it's more expensive than uh, standard filters. A lot of local people here are already drinking tank water and will some people will go to tank only. That's That's got its own issues and it's not something that I recommend that everybody do because of the types of tanks that are being used because of the 
the products that come off the roof and the animal poo and the leaves and the lead and things that wash off roofs and dust and everything, you still have to filter your tank water. So we believe in educating people that if you're going to drink your tank water, make sure you filter it properly and, and care for your tank, clean your tank, wash your roofs down, you know, divert down pipes when there's storms. So that's really important. Now reverse osmosis, again, relatively expensive system, not everybody can afford it. And we've had a lot of older people that, that maybe live in caravan parks that are renting and they're, they're saying, I've got liver cancer, I've got this issue. And the, their doctors have actually told them not to drink fluoridated water. What do I do? I can't afford to filter my water. You know, why, and why, should, why should they have to do that? That's the whole point of us having water treatment facilities, that the water is treated and disinfected and then it should be filtered before it comes to us. I think that's, that's really important. One-liners. Dental fluorosis. Damage caused by ingestion of fluoride at an age when the, the enamel is forming on a tooth. Fluoridation ineffective. Yeah, totally ineffective and actually damaging as well. Dangers to infants. Dangers to infants are toxic poisoning, irreversible damage to teeth, to developing teeth. Fluoridation chemicals. They should be dealt with by the producer of the, this toxic waste. Who should be made to pay to dispose of them correctly, ideally not produced in the first place. Do you know where the fluoridation chemicals come from? I have been told that they've come, they're coming, the ones that are coming to Port Macquarie are coming from Incitec Pivot, a phosphate fertilizer company in Geelong. And I suspect that we will also be receiving chemicals from China. Fluoridation chemicals are made from? They're made from superphosphate manufacturing, um, also aluminium production, and they're collected in the smokestacks, they're wetted down and collected in a liquid form, put in barrels and marked highly toxic, dangerous, S7 poison and shipped off to councils to add, to drip into our water supply. Heavy metal contaminants in hydrofluorosilicic acid. I know that phosphate is mined at, at a certain level with uranium, with other uh, metals that belong in the ground and should stay in the ground. And the fluorides that, that are also found in the ground, they belong in the ground, they should stay there. Then, so when when fluoride is, well, when, sorry, when superphosphate is processed, it's contaminated with so many heavy metals that local farmers are, are not wanting to use phosphate fertilizers anymore because it's damaging their crops so much. So there's actually less production of phosphate fertilizer in this country than previously, which is why we're getting it from China now. Pharmaceutical grade? Well, what does that mean? I guess it means that it's been purified, the heavy metals removed, and you know we, how pure how pure can fluoride be? Because it doesn't exist on its own. It's it's really a in combination with say sodium, or aluminium, or something else. So there's as a fluorine gas, it doesn't really exist. I don't think it exists really. I don't think it's possible. And I think most dentists would like to think that's calcium fluoride which is insoluble, it, it, it can damage our bodies as well in, because we can't break it down. So that's I think what the general uh, dental population refers to as pharmaceutical grade, but also hopefully without the contaminants of, of heavy metals.